Hey guys, it's Ryan Dussex with DSX Motorsports coming at you from the, the large expanses of the Suburban. As you can see, I think it's massive. Um, driving the Suburban because yesterday I picked up 22 or 24 tires yesterday for my endurance team buddy. Super cool talking with him. We're talking about basically kind of how the season's been going. Super cool to hear how their season ended essentially. These guys used to run a bunch of Porsches and now they're, they just started running BMWs and they started off kind of rough but mostly kind of teething figuring out their, uh, figuring out their BMWs. And man, they just had a wild ending to the season. Steve was telling me at their last race or maybe the second to the last race that they did, um, like in the last lap, the, uh, their car was running out of, ran out of fuel or was running out of fuel on the back end of the track. So the guy called up and said, hey guys, I'm out of fuel. And they're like, oh man, hold on. Well, the Boxsters behind them for the class was uh, 20 some odd seconds behind them. But the uh, car that was the lead car of the whole group uh, already had hit the uh, white flag. So that guy was on his final lap. So the kind of the, the situation they're in is do we pull in and get a splash of fuel and go back out, risk losing, like definitely losing a position or two, or do we chance it and then just hope that the car actually makes it to the end of the session? And what ended up happening was they're literally coasting downhill, coming to, I think this is a Hallett, coming to the bridge at the finish line at Hallett. If they would have crossed, they were worried that if they crossed the finish line before the lead car, the lead car would get the checkered and then the race would be over. But if they crossed the finish line, they would get the white flag. If they got the finish line before the lead car hit the checkered, they would get a white flag and they would basically, they would they ran out of fuel. So they literally are pedaling this car, trying to keep it in there, and the lead car passed them for the checker, like a half a second before they crossed the checker, and only a second ahead of the boxer that was behind them. So they ended up coming in, I think, second place um, in their class, and, uh, or yes, second place in their class, and third overall. So it's just crazy to just hear about how, like, to the, nail like it was a nail biter for them like right to the very end to uh pull that race out just like that it's so cool and so cool to hear, hear stories like that and uh super fun and talked to him a little bit he's talking about doing some uh getting his fia certification next year and then in 2021 uh, going to do races in europe and possibly in australia and so we talked about that at length um about transport and, and things of the sort and he was telling me about a program that a guy kind of operates from out that he's come across here basically you just arrive you pay a bunch of money like sixteen thousand dollars to do spa and endurance race spa which is pretty cool and you split that up amongst the team of course but you spend that money and that gets you a car over there fuel tires everything you literally like what he does with his bmws they would essentially do with the car for you over there. So that sounded awesome. So I was telling him about how I'm interested in trying to compete at World Time Attack in 2021, you know, and talking about how crazy the internet is, like how you meet people and how they're super friendly and most of them are super friendly. And then, uh, and then literally you're sharing Cheez-Its with a guy and next thing you know, you're talking about, you know, motor builds or you're talking about, you know, crew, guys crewing that you just met for, like in real life in Sydney or guys crewing for me, you know, just all over this place, all over the place. And it's so cool. And he was talking about how they've had similar things with their BMWs where they've had breakdowns and just guys come through in the bench and, you know, pull stuff out of their own, you know, parts of their own private collection to get them back on track and just the wildest stuff, like strangers. And, um, and it's great because, you know, it's awesome that the internet makes the world kind of sucks sometimes but it's awesome the internet makes the world so small because you know motorsports isn't cheap spent a ton of money this year worked a ton of hours this year to try and do it and even still just barely got by and uh and it's great when you know the reach like the reach of your program expands you know not only nationwide but even worldwide uh, a friend of mine 
you know, we met guys like Keith James in uh, Ohio and uh, people all over the country. And while I was over in Sydney, um, this guy hit me up, uh, a guy named Steve Mancini, who owns a little repair shop out there. He hit me up and said, dude, you're in you're in uh, Sydney right now? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I'd like to meet you. And so met him and checked out his prelude. I did like a little video feature on it. Did, met, uh, saw his prelude, was super cool. And I asked him later, I was like, hey, listen, if, if I come out in Sydney in 2021, do you guys think like you could round up a handful of guys to, to maybe help crew for me? He said, dude, absolutely. So it's so cool. Like, it doesn't matter where you're at. The internet makes the world so small. There's always help. So, I mean, even when I was trying to find parts of Virginia, we were able to find parts of Virginia. Guys were reaching out, you know, with parts. Uh, we even drove like six hours to get a part that we didn't even, we ended up worse off than it was, you know. Thankfully, Zach was patient enough to endure that trip through several states to try and pick up parts. And just so, so cool. The internet's just so awesome. And, uh, and I absolutely love it. Like, I love how that that feel that motorsports feel isn't just something i experience in the rocky mountain region or isn't something i experience at high plains raceway it's something i experience everywhere i go even at the gas station pump and gas in west virginia people are talking to me asking me about asking me about the car just i mean it's awesome so yeah super fun uh talking with steve about their plans for next year and then just gets me so excited about next year like just excited about trying to step up my media life at yard. I need to come out with some merch so I can get, you know, stuff for people that help. But also, you know, for people who want to help me out, at least I can reciprocate or give them something that they can, you know, have materially that like, yeah, you know, I want to help you. I want to buy a shirt or whatever. And I just think that's great. And it's just super exciting. And, uh, it's, you know, it's a small world. So, and you, so yeah, so that's super cool. But talking about small world and people to help you out, right now I'm on my way to go talk to Frank, who is a guy I've been working with for, I guess, seven years or so now at Halliburton. Um, he's a guy who kind of got me, got me re-interested or kind of re-acclimated into autocross, and that was like six or seven years ago, and it's kind of taken a brief, uh, uh, a brief pause from it, but somebody else is excited about getting into it. And that gets me excited about getting him out there, which gets me out there. And he's got a pretty sweet IS300. He wants to do a V8 swap in. And he's got a, an FCRX7 that he's had for like 15 or 16 years that he's not done anything with. That in the last year or so, he's been stripping and cutting that car apart. He's got another engine for it, the transmission, and all kinds of fun stuff. And this guy's also my neighbor. I mean, he helped me out so much last year. If you guys were following us last year, I mean, we did, I mean, even this year, obviously, but last year was extra crazy. We threw that rally car together. We did a bunch of rally crosses together with each other in the E36. When I lost my oil pump, he helped me tear it down. And we had to swap a motor. He helped me swap the motor. When I was beating my head against the wall with the clutch, he was down to just rip the thing out, the transmission out. He literally had the transmission out of the E36 in like 20 minutes. Like That guy has definitely been one of those integral parts of the whole, everything that I've been trying to do in local, you know, and super cool and super excited to see him. It's been way too long, especially considering we're neighbors, but as you guys know, I've been traveling quite a bit. He's been doing a lot of stuff. I mean, he's talking about opening, uh, kind of doing some plasma stuff and to want to do like a plasma cutter and or buy a big giant plasma cutter, maybe buy like a laser cutter and start getting into, and I, like a plasma table, I'm sorry, like a laser, a laser cutting table. So he's definitely been talking to some of the locals around here that kind of have experience like Mike Figaro, you know, with uh, Figs Engineering about experience with them. You know, we've even kind of bounced ideas off uh, Zach from the ZF Design, you know, since he's uh, uh, he uses that service about why he likes one better than the other, you know, which route they should, should go, and, you know, definitely bouncing the costs off and stuff. And I really hope that's something that he gets off the ground. I think that would be super cool and uh, super awesome. But, yeah, super cool and chant like, excited to jam out and talk with him uh, maybe have a couple of beers maybe need to get some pizza or something from the house before I go there because I am fucking starving but uh, I'm always starving by the time I get off work but yeah 
super crazy, super cool. But like what I was saying earlier, how sick would an S62 V8 swap be in an E36? Like those things popped up in my browser the other day and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. And then another local guy here who has been doing like the PPIR time attack and been doing a lot of autocrossing, he just started getting into time trials and he's been running time trials at NASA, Ryan Sotak super talented driver driving a bmw and i think he's interested in maybe building a g uh, a gts car for nasa so he was talking about motor swaps and s54 versus supercharging his current car and i mean all kinds of or current motor and the advantages and stuff and i kind of threw it out there you know throwing the s62 out there but i did a little you know googling today because who doesn't like to hear the awesome sounds of an s62 v8 BMW motor and there's definitely several cars that are running um, uh, even GTS cars that are running V like uh, V8 swaps I saw one today I was watching a video on is a GTS 3 car of all things running a uh, an S62 and an E46 chassis BMW I don't think it was an M but I guess it doesn't really matter at that point but yeah I mean that would be sick they weigh like 340 pounds and they are heavier but not much heavier than an s50 but the center of gravity is lower it's for a little bit further back i mean it would just be sick uh so yeah i don't know lots of crazy stuff out there but and cars are fun love bmws he's even chatting old bill caswell up about a little six speed he had you know whether it was a zf or a get track and we're talking about the differences and sounds like the the zf uh, six speed is it's only like 78 pounds he said like super light so i mean there's even like i mean all kinds of options out there with bmws they're like they're almost like hondas supers i guess are like that i guess the deeper you get into things the more like that but i will say there's a big departure from you know the older subaru recipe or not subaru but uh, um uh, bmw recipe versus what's available now so it's pretty crazy they're very much like legos they're very modular you know you pick up something like you put any of the inline six cylinders and pretty much anything up till 2006 or 2007 and super cool now aaron would probably argue with me that his uh, e92 was the last of the good bmws but i do not agree with that definitely an e46 e38 e39 kind of guy um with maybe the only exception i can think of is the z4 because they had the super badass uh s54 they weren't direct injected super awesome that uh that those things even existed in the first place so but that's pretty much it i'm uh, pulling into the old driveway here with uh grab my pizza before i go and see frank and uh thanks for stopping in and I think that felt a little bit more random than more, but uh, super awesome about next year and compete next year and uh, super excited to see how like the Colorado teams and other Colorado racers are doing. So thanks for checking in, subscribe, hit that little uh, cheese it bell that's on the bottom, you know, maybe save a, save a bird, who cares? I don't know, Let's do something, get that little bird, get a little wing on there and just tap that little subscribe button that's probably down there somewhere, I don't know. But yeah, we love the support. We need the support. Excited about next year. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow.